What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got another really awesome video for you guys. These past few weeks, I've been learning so much about 2.5 inch drones, about building. So I really wanna share that knowledge with you guys. And today we're gonna to talk all about my new 2.5 inch custom drone actually. I built this with my friend Leon. He's a professional drone pilot as well. And I learned so much just by watching him build this, honestly. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any video footage, but I'm just gonna share with you guys the knowledge and the importance of having a rig like this. I'm sure a lot of you guys are kind of looking for the best rig for flying indoors, honestly. And I'm on the same boat with you guys. I started off flying a 3.5 inch Cinewhoop. I came from five inches, honestly, and a 3.5 inch was really awesome because you still have that power. You still have that thrust that feels like a five inch. However, you could still get really cinematic shots with a full GoPro and it's really protected. So you don't really have to worry about hurting people. So I really fell in love with the 3.5 inch, honestly. but. I realized I was kind of hitting a barrier when I tried doing indoor stuff with my 3.5 inch. It felt way too bulky. It felt really uncontrollable, honestly. And in the end, it's a really loud drone as well. So, all right guys. So another really important difference to make between these two drones are the batteries they take, honestly. With this new little guy here, I got these new 650 Ma Tattoo LiPo batteries. And these things are really awesome because they're really lightweight. They charge extremely fast. It only takes me 15 minutes to charge one of these. So really efficient, really good. And I get around like four or five minutes without the GoPro on top. I imagine with a naked GoPro, maybe around like three minutes, honestly. It depends on the battery, but I really highly recommend these 650 mAh batteries. On something like a 3.5 inch, you kind of want to treat it more like a five inch, honestly. So I use a 1550 mAh Tattoo, again, fun fly batteries. These are 4S actually, and I get really good results on this. I mean, I get around like, three or four minutes with a GoPro on top. It depends on the wind, honestly. But without GoPro, you could go easily like eight minutes. So this scene is really awesome. But um, like I said, different bird for different jobs. So I really enjoy flying a drone that feels kind of fast, nimble, easy to control while not really feeling too sluggish. So that's why I really recommend these 1550 batteries because they're basically designed for 4S, five inch freestyle, honestly. So you're able to kind of maintain that nice in control feeling without feeling too sluggish, which is really important for aerial and drone filmmaking. So yeah, that's basically it for the 3.5 inch here. All right guys, so for our first flight, we're gonna be using the GEPRC Cinelog 35 here. I'm gonna put on my GoPro Hero 11 here actually, and I'm just gonna fly around, show you guys how loud this thing is and what kind of footage you can get. And also kind of like my general thoughts and opinions about how it feels to me. Obviously I've been flying this thing for a really long time, so it's really natural to me, but I'm gonna go directly from this drone to this new 2.5 inch. And I'm gonna share with you guys my thoughts on how it feels flying a much lighter drone, because obviously with drones, you can really feel those weight differences. I know it doesn't really seem like much to some, but um, with drones, you never wanna underestimate the power of flying a lighter quad, honestly. Even though this drone is technically one inch smaller, 2.5 inch compared to 3.5 inch, the difference is freaking huge. Like it really feels way more floaty. It feels way more safer to hit smaller gaps. And it feels like you're in way more control, which is absolutely key to doing real estate and doing these one takes around people and talent. So that's why this drone is so huge and groundbreaking for me because now I can do more cinematic shots around realtors, around uh, dancers maybe, or literally anyone for that matter. And that's why I'm so excited about this new drone because it's unlocking a whole new possibility of drone filmmaking for me. So that's why I would highly recommend trying out different drones, learning how to build and really seeing what fits your needs honestly, because I started off with five inch, then I went to the 3.5 inch, but now I'm finally graduating to the 2.5 inch. I think drone filmmaking, that's so important being able to fly a small quad while still being able to balance that really good image quality. So next week, I'm gonna be decasing my GoPro Hero 11 and making it naked so I can put it on here. So we're gonna be able to get really awesome shots with this rig. So I'm extremely excited about that, honestly. But um, all right guys, so for this first flight, we have the GoPro Hero 11 here at 5.3K, eight by seven aspect ratio, 24 frames. And I got all my ND8 filter here. So that's gonna be awesome. Everything looks all good to go here, honestly. All right guys, you might be wondering what kind of strap this is. This is the fast strap actually, and I really enjoy using this because the strap the Goggles 2 comes with is really flimsy. It does not stay on your head at all, so it's kind of unreliable. So I really like having the fast strap here because it comes with a battery holder, honestly, and it just looks really sick and it really feels nice and secure on my head now. So this is how it looks with the Goggles 2 on. See, everything's all good in one package. 
I keep going where I want. I feel super lightweight, doesn't feel too heavy, kind of like how the V2 goggles felt. So I really like this new setup here. All right guys, so right now we're cruising around with the Cinelog 35 here. We got the GoPro Hero 11 on there with ND8. And I really like flying with the O3 air unit because I went all the way around this bend over here. I'm super far away from me right now, but I still have a full 50 megabytes, honestly. So that's really awesome. So yeah, I'm all the way out of line of sight. And honestly, I can see really well here. Video's good. Super good, honestly, yeah. That's why I really like the O3 air unit because you can actually use it for long range. I mean, people use the Vista for doing mountain surfing. I just saw a video the other day where this guy literally flew up a mountain to capture an avalanche and he was using the Vista. So don't underestimate how good DJI gear is, honestly, so. Ooh. Okay, now it's kind of breaking up a little bit. Okay, we're good, we're good. I have 10 megabits, but it's still kind of smooth, you know? Still predictable. That's why I like the Uthi area in it. Four megabits. Oops. See, it's kind of different on the way back, which is interesting. Maybe there's more interference up there, so I'm gonna go a little bit lower. Yeah, interesting. So on the way back, actually, I have different connection compared to on the way out. Maybe it's because of the way the antennas are pointed. But everything's good now. Well, yeah, I mean, this rig, I mean, this is what I'm used to. This is my 3.5 inch. I mean, it's really good for flying outdoors, honestly. But I'm starting to find that it's definitely not the best drone for flying anything really close proximity and flying slow. Like this thing is really good for going fast and getting really sick cinematic shots, but if you're going for a slow control type stuff, that's where the 2.5 inch really comes in. So that's why I'm super excited to test that out after this. But I wanna show you guys an example of the kind of footage you can get with this, how it feels. But yeah, you really gotta know your gear. And that's why it's so important to test your gear a lot because when I'm out here testing in a location like this, I'm right by my house. Next time I'm on a shoot, I know the limits of my system. I know how far I can push it. I know what's possible. I know what's not possible. So that's why it's so important to fly every day and really just try to get as much experience as you can on the sticks, honestly, because right now I feel super calm. There really is no difference for me, whether it's flying over water or over trees, like none of it really matters to me. I'm just flying right now. But I think one of the biggest skills to being a good drone pilot is being responsible, actually, like of course you get really sick shots, but that, at the end of the day, can you land your drone safely and get the footage back? So that's why it's really important to be responsible to being an aerial cinematographer and an FPV pilot, because at the same time, it's so creative and so freeing, but at the same time, you don't want to crash and you want to be responsible about safety. So that's why FPV is so awesome and so rewarding because it's really creative, but it's also really technical at the same time. Okay. All right guys, so finally, we're gonna be able to put this thing to the test. I thought that this would be a better place to really test out this drone and really showcase what it's about because over there where we were flying the 3.5 inch, it's really kind of any drone's territory, but where this drone really shines is being able to hit really small gaps. So that's why I chose this location now because now I'm going to be able to zip around carports and really kind of kind of show you guys how agile and how nimble this drone really is because that's really how this drone excels. So I'm gonna put this bad boy up and do some kind of quick freestyle around the parking lot and carports here. So let's do it. Sure this is tucked around ISO 100 now. We're shooting at 4K, 
All right, we are recording on the O3 air unit. Woo! <laughs> that thing went really close to me. Oh well, yeah, as you can see guys, this drone is way more floaty feeling and it's way quieter. I mean, just listen to that guys. This drone is way quieter than the 3.5 inch. It's way quieter, way more lighter feeling, but then of course it doesn't do as well in the wind. So the wind is definitely blowing me around here. So. Yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. Around me? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this feels way more floaty, honestly. It feels really susceptible to wind current, honestly. So as I mentioned earlier, it's not the best for outdoor rig, obviously. But now I'm gonna showcase to you guys the power of this thing. See, I'm still not really used to flying slow yet. That's really gonna take me some time to practice flying slower. I'm so used to really trying to go fast, but it's really important to take a step back and try to fly a little bit slower, honestly, especially for real estate cinematic stuff. That's why I love this thing because it's using all the same components as all my other drones. I still have the O3 air unit. I have TBS Crossfire. So my connection is really strong. I mean, it's everything that I'm used to, but now in this much smaller, quieter body. Well, yeah, I freaking love this thing. I mean, I feel really comfortable going through buildings, going through these trees here while maintaining a really strong connection because it's ex the exact gear I'm used to using on my other drones. Got my TBS Crossfire here. Got my O3 air unit. That's all I need. Yeah, so I'm really liking this new drone. I've been flying for about four minutes and 30 seconds now. I have 21.9 volts. I think that's a good time to land now. Whew. All right guys, so my first impressions after flying my Cinelog 35 is this new drone is, it feels pretty different, but also really similar in ways. And I think that's really important when you're selecting new drones. You don't want it to feel crazily different from your other rigs because as drone pilots, we build up so much muscle memory into flying a certain kind of rig. So I really like how it feels familiar to my Cinelog 35. My controls are the same. A huge benefit is that this thing is way quieter now. Like it's a huge difference. It's like literally like night and day. Like right now, I feel really comfortable flying around my parking lot here. And honestly, I don't think my neighbors are complaining. This thing is, it's not loud at all. However, on the Cinelog 35, that thing is freaking screaming. So that thing definitely attracts a lot of attention. So I definitely feel a lot more low key, a lot safer flying this thing around. But as I was flying around, I was starting to picture like, oh, could I do this for a real estate shoot? And honestly, I think it's gonna take a lot more practice to, for me flying indoors. Like I think this thing is a huge step up for doing real estate now, but just by buying a 2.5 inch is not gonna instantly make you better and more fit to do real estate videos. It takes a new drone, but also a ton more practice. So I'm really excited to practice this thing a lot more. I'm gonna try to do a lot more real estate flying. Then maybe the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and fly around into the common house with this thing and see how I feel about it. But honestly, yeah, it feels really good. I'm really excited about this new body, but it definitely made me feel humble that I definitely still need a lot of practice into hitting more gaps because it honestly feels just like my other drone. It's not gonna make it magically easier to fly inside. I think it's gonna be really important to me to really dial in my new cinematic flying of flying more slow because what this taught me after flying this thing a few times is just by buying a new rig is not gonna instantly make you better as a drone pilot to do real estate work especially. Like it's gonna take a new rig, but also a ton more, probably a hundred more hours flying inside to really feel confident to do this on a really good level, honestly. So yeah, I think it was a really good learning experience, but I think the biggest takeaway is that, yeah, I mean, even though it's a lot smaller, you definitely have to practice flying slower a lot more. I mean, it's a whole different flight philosophy. I mean, I'm so used to flying super fast, five inch outdoor kind of shots, like buzzing down mountains or skimming along the coast really fast. So it's gonna take quite a bit of time to really kind of take a step back and learn to fly more deliberately and learn to fly more slowly, honestly. I think that's gonna take definitely maybe another month or two, but um, definitely really excited about this new rig. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's a huge step up to doing more real estate work because 
although it's not gonna make me instantly able to hit these gaps, I definitely feel more confident. I feel safer flying around people, honestly. And I love how quiet it is. That's a huge benefit, honestly. But overall, I really like this new rig, honestly. I mean, super lightweight, as you can see, it really kind of stripped down everything you don't need. I mean, there's nothing super plus. It's like, it's basically like a basic drone at its heart, you know? You just got the nice carbon fiber frame here and it's really easy to work on. On other Cinewoops like the Cinelog 35, it's such a hassle to kind of take it apart, especially when you're just trying to do basic stuff. This thing all works on one basic frame here. So you just take off this main piece here. It's really easy to work on. Propellers are really easy to access. So I think this design is really good. And I'm especially excited to mount on my naked GoPro Hero 11 next week. But for now, the O3 Air unit will have to do. But overall, I really enjoy flying this thing. And I think it's gonna be really game changing for my brand as a filmmaker and as a drone pilot, especially. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next one.